What's up everybody? Welcome back to Oregon Coast Fishing. Today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to fish soft beads. Okay, I am not an expert on soft beads. Bobber dogging is not really my thing, but I've had uh, people actually reach out and request uh, that I do a little tutorial on how I do them and uh, and how the setup kind of works and, and what goes down. So we're going to go over that real quick. Um, first things first, 100 subscribers. want to thank everybody that subscribed. If you're not, go down, subscribe. Uh, been putting some steel on the bank lately, uh, trying to get out there as much as I can for you guys. Um, really, my, my motivation to make these videos is for those that can't fish, that you know either moved away or their legs just don't handle steelhead fishing anymore. And uh, I know when I can't fish, you know when I'm when I'm working and I'm on the road and don't have my gear, I like to to check out everyone's videos and see what they're catching and how they're doing it. So. Without further ado, let's jump right into this. Uh, Quick disclaimer, I am not a professional bobber dogger, okay? So this video is really aimed for people who have never fished soft beads before. Um, it's kind of a tricky setup, honestly. It's 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 a lot different than, than most other type of fishing um, that I've ever done anyway. So uh, yeah, if somebody never showed me how to do this, I would have never figured it out. So hopefully I can show somebody um, and do the same thing. Okay, uh, first let's go over our setup real quick. All right, so we're going to quickly go over everything I'm going to be using in this video today. Okay, you got your bobber stop, your bobber, and your bead. Okay, that all comes in the same package right there. Next thing you're going to have is your three-way swivel with the clasp. Okay, I'm going to be using 15-pound fluoro clear. That's fluoro-coated mono. Okay, this is your, your bobber or your, your bead stop, your peg, I'm sorry. Okay, that comes in this package right here. We're going to be using B&R soft beads. That's a 10 millimeter bead. Uh, it's smaller. We're going to be fishing low clear water tomorrow. And then right here I got, I believe it is a 2 aught hook. Okay, you want something smaller because you don't want that hook dragging on the bottom and messing up your presentation. Okay, this bead is actually going to be floating off the bottom. And that hook's going to be kind of just floating with it. And that's what you want. Okay, now that we've gone over everything we're going to be using in the video, um, I'm going to quickly show you how I tie it up. Uh, I know I can show you all of this, but um, obviously if you've never never bobber dogged or steelhead fished before, you might not know how to put this little bobber stop on or where this bead goes, or um, especially these, these little bead pegs. These are kind of pain in the butt. I know I had to YouTube how to do it my first time because I still didn't understand it after somebody explained it to me. Okay, so... First things first, got your main line. This is connected to my reel, uh, to my rod. This is 40 pound braid. Um, it's red. See it a little bit better. They make red, yellow, high vis stuff. So that's kind of what you want to use because you want to watch this line as it's going down the river. Uh, that way you know when to mend, where to mend. Um, if you don't understand mending, I did a quick video on that real quick. Uh, you can go check that out. So first things first, we're going to take pick it up we're going to take our little bobber stop right here and that is going to go over our braid you can see it's in this little plastic tube it's this green thread uh, it comes with your floats when you buy them when you buy this type right here okay so what we're going to do is we're going to slide that on the braid okay right through the little tubing and we're going to take it and we're going to zoom in on that and we're going to move this piece of thread off that piece of plastic Okay, this piece of plastic, you don't need that. Uh, if you're doing this on the river, save this. Don't throw it in the in the river or in the sand or anything. Make sure you take everything out. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move that up our line a little bit. Um, I kind of like to get it up a little bit higher. And you're going to grab each end and you're going to pull that down and cinch it tight. Okay, so now that thing's tied on there, you can still move it. Okay, but your bobber, when your bobber's on, it's going to go up and hit that. And that's your depth you're going to be fishing at. Okay, so now that we got that on, the next thing is your float. And now your float's going to go, okay, you're going to put it, if you buy one of these, you're going to put your braid through the orange side. I can get it in there. Okay, so you're going to put that through, and you're going to push it all the way through until it pops out the other side. I'm doing this when it's pouring rain and everything's wet it's kind of a pain in the butt I like to do all this the night before so I'm set up at the river okay so now I got that on 
Okay, we've got your bobber stop and your bobber. The next thing that I like to use is one of these little tiny orange beads that it comes in the same package as your bobber and your bobber stop. And uh, I'll tell you why I put this on in a second. All you're gonna do, there's a little hole in here. So you're gonna put your braid through there. Put your bead up. Okay, so now we've got bobber stop, bobber, and bead. And this is all on our braid, on our main line. Okay, now we are done with our main line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little three-way swivel that I showed you, okay? And we're gonna tie our braid to this. All I do is just a standard, I guess you'd call it a fisherman's knot. I don't know if there's an actual name for it. Um, I'm not big on knots. This is the knot that I always use for everything. Uh, if you wanna learn some new knots, YouTube is full of them. What I do is about seven times through, around there, go through the hole, you'll create another hole, and back through it. If I can get it. And cinch that down tight. Okay, that's on. Okay, so this little bead that I was talking about that's on there, moving around. Okay, so what that's going to do is that's going to sit on top of your little three-way swivel here. And the reason that I do that is because if you look on the bottom of these floats, you see that big hole? What will actually happen is that hole will get stuck over your three-way swivel and it won't fish right. Okay, so I put that little bead on there. You can put one on the top too. People put them on the top and the bottom. Uh, some people even put corkies on top of here. And so basically what that does is they'll see the corky hit the top of the bobber stop and, and that shows them that, you know, their line's not tangled up and that they're fishing correctly. Um, so you can do that if you want. Okay, the next thing is this P-line. Sorry, it's all torn up. It's seen some weather, seen some fishing trips with me. Is this 15 pound fluoro clear. And what I'm gonna use here is probably about, I'm gonna start at about three feet. Okay, we're probably gonna trim some of that off, but that's okay. And if I can find my scissors. Okay, cut that off. And now what we're gonna do is the first thing we're gonna do now that that's off is we're gonna use one of these bead pegs here. Okay, if you look at that bead peg, you see it's got that little metal loop at the top. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna run your line. You can't really see it. You're gonna run your line through that little loop. Okay, and this is on your, your uh, floral carbon or uh, if you choose to use mono. So now that we got that, we're going to kind of hold both sides and we're going to slide this bead peg up over. Okay, so now we've got it on there. Okay, don't, don't tie, or tie above that little cinch that you just put in your line. Okay, this is floral carbon. Any little cinch that you put in that is just going to weaken it even more. So make sure you cut that off. All right, guys, so let's run down everything that we've got real quick. I, I actually had to cut my line and start over because I forgot to put my soft bead on before tying my leader, which shows you I don't really bobber dog or fish beads too much, but that's all right. So we've got our bobber stop, okay? We've got our bobber down to our little bead to our three-way class barrel swivel. Okay, so now that we got all that, and we've taken our fluorocarbon leader and we've put that um, your little bead stopper on. Okay, this is where I messed up because I actually tied this to my barrel swivel, um, which is not how you want to do it. You want to put your bead on first. Okay, you can actually, a lot of people, what they do is they make, um, you know, five, six, seven, eight of these leaders the night before and uh, you can buy like either this little, you know, little piece of foam or they actually make uh, leader holders. I don't know what they're called, but you can actually wrap your leaders around it. And uh, every time you break off, which is going to happen a lot when you're fishing soft beads, especially when you're starting, uh, you don't have to go through all this again. You can just grab the leader and tie it on. Okay, so what I did there was I, I ran the bead through the floral carbon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it all the way down. I'm not going to put it over the um, bead stop yet, the peg just because I wanna uh, tie my hook on and measure everything first. Okay, so now that we got that, we can actually tie it to 
the other side of our barrel swivel and not the side with the clasp. That little clasp is going to be for your weight. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to twist this around about five or six times, just like the braid. I guess I did seven or eight. Okay, so we're going to twist that around. Go through the hole. I know I'm not showing you guys a close up of, of how I'm tying this knot. Like I said, uh, if you want to explore knot tying and learn some better knots, um, there's videos strictly for that. I'm not a professional knot tire, so I'm not going to sit here and show you guys the one knot that I know. Okay. So with fluorocarbon, what you do um, with realistically any knot that you tie is you want to wet your line before cinching it down. Uh, the reason for that is because fluorocarbon actually burns onto itself and it'll weaken your knot. So get that wet, cinch it down nice and tight. Okay. So let's go over it one more time. We've got our bobber stopper. Okay, going down next, we've got our bobber. Our small bead, our three-way clasp swivel, okay, our soft bead on the fluorocarbon, and our peg. Okay, now the last thing we're going to put on is this hook. Well, second to last thing, I guess. So, same knot I've been tying. I'm going to tie it on real quick. I'm actually move this stuff up a little bit so it's out of the way. Two, three, four, five, six. And this hook, I believe, is a two watt hook. I think I already mentioned that. It's a lighter hook. Uh, it's not going to drag the bottom while my bead's trying to float, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, so now that we got that, we're going to trim our tag ends off. Both of these. Okay, so now what you're going to want to do, okay, so you got your hook. What you're going to want to do is put your, your bead peg, okay, the way that people measure it out usually is about finger length. So you go about three finger lengths, two finger lengths. I prefer three finger lengths. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this down. It doesn't have to be, you know, exact. You don't need to get a tape measure out or anything. But you, know, you want that thing above your hook. Okay. So I'll slide this down on there. Okay. So you take your bead and you slide it down. So you want to kind of pinch right there so you don't move the peg with it. Try not to hook yourself like I'm doing. And you slide that bead down over that peg. Okay. Gonna push it up in there, squish it together. So what that peg is gonna do is that's gonna allow that bead to sit above the hook like that. Okay, you don't want that bead being pushed down onto that hook. I think that's a common mis misconception with soft beads if you've never fished them before, never seen anybody fish them. Okay, your bead does not go on your hook, it goes above it. And now what's gonna happen basically is that fish is gonna grab that bead and you're gonna pull, and that's gonna pull that line through, and you're actually gonna hook the fish on the outside side of its mouth, usually. Okay, so the last thing, I don't think I went over this in the beginning. So this is a P-Line Dragon Ball weight. Okay, these are actually made for like Bobber Dog and Dragon the Bottom. And what you're gonna do, um, and the reason that I had this clasp on is because you can switch this weight out depending on um, you know the depth and the current of the water you're fishing. Uh, so you want to have, you know, a couple different sizes of these. Um, obviously, if you're, you're casting out and your bobber's just sitting there because this thing's so heavy that it's not allowing anything to move downriver, you want to downsize your weight a little bit. Okay. So we're going to put that on. I know I already said last time, but we'll go over it one more time just so it's very clear of everything that's on here and how, to, how it goes in order. Okay, so starting on your braid, very first thing, bobber stop, 
bobber, the little bead, okay, then you've got your three-way swivel clasp, okay, that's what your weight goes on to, your braid ties to one side, your floral carbon ties to the other, and then you've got the clasp where your weight goes, okay. Now I've got still about a three-foot leader, okay, got my soft bead that's pegged about three finger lengths above my hook with my size two odd one odd it's two lot hook okay and all right so uh let's kind of go over how we're gonna how i'm gonna fish this thing tomorrow um so basically the water that i'm gonna be fishing this in is uh realistically the same type of water that i would fish you know a jig or a pink worm um looking for anything that's four feet or deeper with a walking pace current and I'm sure you've heard that term before. What we mean by walking pace current is if you cast this out, you know, if you're not dragging the bottom, if you're fishing a, a worm or a jig or something, you cast this out and it's floating down river freely and you walk beside it, you'd be at the same pace. So pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. Um, and okay, so what I'm gonna be doing here is you want this weight dragging on the bottom, okay? This thing is realistically made to drag the bottom. That's why these are called dragon balls. So um, how you're gonna know that is a couple different ways. Okay, one, your bobber should be pointing down river. Okay, if your bobber's pointing down river, that means that this, this weight is doing its job. It's dragging the bottom. Okay, another thing you're gonna see is this thing's not gonna be just kind of freely uh, at one solid pace moving down the river. It's gonna kind of hold up for a second. You might see it go down a little bit, go under the water. Um, you know, it's just going to kind of be sporadic. That's another way that you're going to know. Okay, so if, if this thing's either pointed straight up or not pointing down river, uh, you want to adjust your depth a little bit. So you want to move your bobber stop up your line to allow um, everything to go down a little bit deeper. Okay, uh, that's how I fish these. Okay, another way that you can fish this, if you're not fishing, you know, that, those deeper holes and that, that uh, walking pace current, if you're in kind of some faster white water, um, that's a little bit shallower. Okay, it's the same setup, except you're eliminating this bobber and you're eliminating this bobber stop, okay? So all you're gonna have is your, your braid down to uh, your, your three-way swivel with your weight on it. Okay, you can, you can make your leader, you probably wanna make it a little bit shorter. This is a drift setup, which is what I'm going over right now. Um, so you can make your leader a little bit shorter. It's the, the exact same setup, you know, your bead peg, your bead, your hook. Um, and all that that's allowing you to do is instead of, you know, casting out and, and watching your bobber going down and, you know, freeing your line, letting your line go down freely, you're going to cast out, close your bail, and you're going to actually feel this weight kind of dragging the bottom. Okay, you're going to close your bail, hold your pull up, and you'll feel your tip as your weight's kind of dragging across the bottom and you're waiting for that actual strike and setting the hook. Okay, I don't really fish that, that... They call it brave water, um, that faster, you know, shallower water. That's not really my style of fishing. Um, I like those deep holes, uh, you know, slower currents. Um, that's my preference. Everybody's got their own preference. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I am not an expert on bobber dogging. I'm just trying to help some people out who've never done it before. Um, kind of show you the ropes of, of how you can set it up. You can perfect things, try things out. Um, you know, check out other videos if you want uh, and just kind of see what works for you. And hopefully you get yourself a fish. Tight lines, everyone.